everyone. Once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for joining us and uh, participating in this uh, webinar. Just uh, some uh, uh, housekeeping. If you need to ask questions, you can uh, raise your hand uh, during the presentation or type your questions in Q&A or type your questions in the chat. And you can also submit uh, written questions using the Q&A button. Feel free to chat with the other attendees, interact with the speaker, interact with the moderator, and interact with others. This webinar is being recorded and will be available to watch it again on our YouTube channel. Please uh, like our YouTube channel, our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We will get uh, started uh, in the next minute. Uh, welcome to the speaker, Benfano Soivito. Thank welcome. you for accepting the invitation to speak. Nice to have you. And we are looking forward to learning a lot from you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting so, uh, me to this. Let me introduce our eminent speaker. Dr. Ben Fano Soweto is an associate professor at the University of Bina Nusantara, Indonesia, where he teaches and conducts research in the fields of networking, internet security, and internet of things. Benfano has been working as a researcher in the, in the IT field since completing his master's degree and doctorate in Southern Illinois University with a focus on network and internet system security. Benfano has more than two decades of experience as a researcher and has published more than 160 papers at conferences and, reput and reputable journals. Ben Fano has also worked in the industry as an IT specialist to solve software problems and hardware associated with the internet infrastructure to ensure the system operates properly and safely. And today he's going to speak to us uh, on uh, a very important topic that is uh, information security risk management and how we can prepare for new threats and future risks. As we know that uh, since uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, more and more of us have started working online. Businesses have gone online and they're not returning back to face-to-face. -to -face. Many of us are working from home, teaching from home. Uh, students are learning from home. And therefore this ends up posing more risks as there is, as I would say, more fish for the cyber attackers to catch. Therefore, information security risk management becomes crucial because in today's knowledge economy, information is money, information is power, it is the new oil. So what our speaker, Professor Ben Fano Sovito uh, is going to uh, present to us today is on how to build the technical foundation for a comprehensive security program, how to calculate risks and implement the processes necessary to develop that foundation into a mature vulnerability assessment and risk management program. As uh, explained uh, by our prestigious speaker and uh, in the flyer that uh, I sent out for invitation, enterprises or companies in today's world always use technology to run their business. So companies will be very dependent on the technology they use. Furthermore, along with the development of the company and the existence of digital transformation, 
the company will aid or adopt the latest technology, including using cloud, which also brings new threats and increasing risks into the company's business processes. Therefore, it is very important for every organization to analyze threats and calculate risks before replacing or using new technology in business processes in their company. It is highly recommended for every organization to have some form of vulnerability assessment and risk management program. And that goes off without saying the importance of uh, information security risk management and the important role cybersecurity personals, uh, cybersecurity uh, professionals play in any organization. And as uh, if, if you do a simple Google search and if you read reports and research out there, you will learn that at the moment, we lack not hundreds, but thousands of information security professionals and cybersecurity professionals. So it will take years. Uh, the forecasting, the prediction is it will, it is not going to happen next year or the next two, three years, but it was going to take at least five to 10 years to get everyone trained so that everyone in the organization and we all get protected. In the meantime, what we need to do is whether we are cyber security professionals or information security professionals or not, it is for each and every one of us that use computers, that use information technology, that go online to be able to learn the fundamentals of information security risk so that we are able to mitigate against potential threats. And with that, I hand over to Professor Ben Fano Soweto to take us through what he has for us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Sam, for inviting me to be a speaker in this event. This is very, uh, I, um, I mean, this is very important for me to share uh, everything that I know. And thank you for a nice introduction about me, Professor. Now, please allow me to uh, share my PowerPoint. Um, I hope you can see my screen right now. Is that clear? Also, my voice, is that clear? Yes, we can. Your voice is clear. We can see your screen. Please proceed. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, okay. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending to this event, to do this webinar. Uh, as Prof. Sam introduced me. My name is Ben Fano Suito. I'm from Binus University or Bina Nusantara, Bina Nusantara University. The, my, the title for today's talk is Information Security Risk Management. So uh, in this talk, I will discuss about uh, how to build the technically foundation for comprehensive security program, calculating risk, and the process necessary to develop the, to develop that foundation, how to build the management for risk. So, uh, have you, as, as we already know, that we all is depend on the technology. Have you have experienced that when you work on something or when you work on project, you got error? Probably the application that you use just turn around and around without do nothing, just hang over there. I think most of them have explained about that. And, <clears throat> and also, sometimes we also have a experience that if we do not have internet, we kind of have a stressful situation. So today, actually, enterprise and also 
we are now dependent on technology and application because without technology and application, we cannot do nothing. Almost all of the companies today, most of them, I probably I can say that all the enterprise today, they always or they must use the technology. But have you think, how about if this technology fail? How about if this technology have a problem? Can technology or internet fail? Of course, everything that a uh, human made that has uh, something that can be fail. So what is the cause of fail of this technology? There are, there are two things actually that can make technology fail. So the first thing is about uh, vulnerability and malware, okay? So, uh, uh, but internet application that we, we use now can be fail that because of uh, malware. So, uh, uh, such as the phishing, ransomware, cloud vulnerability, social engineering, etc. That that is kind of malware that we have to face on. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and then the next question is, how about uh, how about to prepare, how about to avoid of this malware? Today, malware, as we know, is phishing, ransomware, cloud vulnerability, social engineering, and extra. In the future, probably we'll have more, a lot malware in our internet. So are you ready for that? So we must be ready to, uh, to face on this malware. And the second threat, that cause of the natural disaster and services. For example, the second threat is can be of fire, flood, tornado, lightning, earthquake, terrorist attack like 9-11, tsunami, and the service, it could be no internet, blackout, and etc. So are we ready for that? So we must ready for that. How if something happened bad? How if bad thing happened to our company? How is something bad happen to our life? So we get ready for that. Okay. Um, before talk more further about this about this uh, threat, so let me uh, explain a little bit about the differences between threat, control, and risk. So actually, threat and vulnerability have the potential to pose risk. Actually, vulnerability will lead to threat, and threat will lead to risk. To know about threat, control, and risk, let me uh, get this example. So, for example, I have a two meeting on Friday, the first meeting at 11 to 12, and then second meeting at 1 and 2 p.m. Okay, so if we see this condition, what is the threat will come up? So the first thing, probably the threat, the first threat is, probably I will wait for the second meeting. For example, these two meetings has a different place, one in the building A and the other one in building B. So I have to run or you have, I have to go to the B building after the meeting and A building done. So probably the threat is I will wait for the second meeting. And then the second threat probably I cannot have lunch because I have I have to go right away after the first meeting to the second meetings. So if I know the situation, so 
I can have a control. Probably the control is I have to set alarm to remind me when I in in the first meeting. So I have to set alarm at 12 o'clock. So when the meet at 12 o'clock, so I know that I have to end the first meeting. And probably I have to take a lunch from home. So I have so that I can have lunch on the way to the second meeting. In, in this case, assume that I have to take taxi. So while I mean on the way to the second meeting in the taxi, I can have lunch. So that's why the, the third action that I have to do is I have to booking taxi in the morning. So the taxi will come exactly at 12 o'clock in the first meeting. Okay, so if, if we look this control, the action that I take before threat happen, it's look good, right? It's, it's look okay. Oh, so I will not late. So I can have lunch. It's look okay. But is it safe? Is it okay? Well, how about if something unexpected still happen even though we have applied the control? For example, how about if something happens? For example, oh, on the way to the second meeting or in building B, uh, there, there is a heavy traffic jam. Or probably the taxi just stuck cannot run anymore, probably because the taxi ran out of the gasoline and it could be happen, right? So that is the important thing that we have to focus on. So we have to prepare. How about if something happened, uh, something unexpected still happened? We have to prepare. What should we do? If in the middle or in the in the way go to the second meal thing, we got traffic jam. Okay, that is the focus on our talk today. So we have to make a preparation if something happen, some some bad thing happen. We we have to make a preparation. Okay, that is the focus or uh, uh, for our meeting today. Okay, so we we have to manage a risk. We have to calculate the risk. We have to manage the risk so that even though something bad thing, some bad thing happen, we can mitigate the cause of the, the cause of the cause that appear of that risk, okay? So in this, in this scenario, we will see that risk actually has not happened yet. So that's make a room or make a time for us to manage the risk, to make a plan, okay? So I hope in this illustration, we got the same thing about the threat control, the threat, the control, and also, how about if something still happened even though we have applied the control, okay? Okay, and then now we see the, the differences between management, the normal management, and information security risk management. Normally, or, uh, or as we know, that management divided into two uh, to uh, uh, to 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 ex to uh, the management normal management divided into three plan or three action. The first, if I am a say I am a manager of sales sales manager. So the first thing we have to do, the first thing I have to do is I have to make a plan a plan where do how do i can sell of the product okay 
I make a plan where I have to sell the product, when, and who is the target. Probably I have to make a plan like that. And then after I have a plan, I do the action. I selling the product action according to the plan. And then after that, I have to monitoring or I have to review. Do our plan, do my plan is good do the sales is good, so I have to monitor and review. But these three steps is different in information security risk management. In information security risk management, the first thing is the same. I have to make plan. How about if bad thing happen? How about if unexpected, unexpected things happen? So I have to make plan. Oh. After I calculate uh, the risk to go to the second meeting is too high, so probably the plan the plan is I have to tell them, ask them to make the meeting at the two p.m. instead of one p.m. Okay, so. In information security risk management, the preparing to face on something bad happen, hopefully that plan never be executed. So hopefully the plan to prepare for the bad thing never executed. So if the plan executed, it means the bad thing happened. So this is the step of the information security management. First, I have to make a plan. Then normally, or this is the very good thing, I have to simulation. Simulation, for example, if we are in the building, normally there is a say that, uh, what's that, uh, fire simulation. So in fire simulation, we assume that there is a fire in the building. So the building management will guide us how to go, go out from the building. That, that's normally we have simulation like that. Okay. So this is the difference between normal the step, the different step of normal management and information security management. So hopefully in security risk management, the plan never executed, okay? okay. So uh, vulnerability plus threat is risk. So the threat will, ex will come up because of vulnerability. What is the vulnerability? Vulnerability actually is a weak spot in our system, weak spot in our application that can exploit it by the bad guy. Okay. Threat is a possibility that something un unwanted will happen to our asset or a destructive process to some productive thoughts that might lead to hampering of the expected outcome. Okay. So vulnerability plus threat, it will lead to risk. Risk is possibility of loss or injury. It means it hasn't happened yet. So that's why it, it's called is possibility because it hasn't uh, uh, happened yet. Okay. It is important to calculate risk. It is important to uh, weight it to give a value of every risk. So risk can be calculated as the likelihood of the occurrence of the vulnerability multiplied by the value of the information as asset minus the percentage of risk mitigated by current control. So in this case, it said that risk can be calculated risk is equal to likelihood of the 
occurrence. Multiply by the value. That is actually the definition of risk if, I, if we would like to calculate the risk. Well, we can see this more detail in the next slide. So now, how to calculate risk? The first thing we have to identify, it. we have to identify what asset, what information, what digital information, and uh, what digital information that we have. What is the hardware and software that related to those digital information? Who is uh, who is or who is the person who take care of that information? So we have to identify all of them because every uh, every things that connect to the digital to the digital information that will explore i mean that those are has a vulnerability okay so and then threat we have to identify we have to identify the threat threat could be because of natural disaster could be because of malware could be because terrorists activity or any other uh, uh, cause for the threat. Okay. So then the last thing we have to identify the control. So in this case, the first thing to calculate is if uh, we have to know what we have. We have to know what if the threat that face on the thing that we have. And then we have to identify, it. do we have a control for those threat? So we have to know that first. Then the second thing, after we know the asset and then we know the threat and we know the control. So we have to uh, put the value, we have to weight it on those asset and threat so it means this is this normally called risk assessment so risk assessment actually is a process of assigning a risk rating or score to each information asset the goal is to determine the relative risk of each vulnerability using various factor so it means i have to see which one asset that most valuable for our company. To do that, I have to assign the score for each asset that, uh, so, so that we know which one asset that most valuable for our company. Okay, so actually that risk assessment. Why we need to assign score or to weight it uh, for every single asset? Because we would like to see the priority, which one, uh, which one asset that has a high priority to keep it uh, secure. And then the third one, we have to know the likelihood. Likelihood is probability that a specific vulnerability will be successfully attacked. Many asset vulnerability combination have external reference for likelihood value. Okay, this mean, uh, after we identify threat, then we also have to assign how look like this threat will successfully attack our asset. So that's basically likelihood probability that specific threat will successfully attack to our asset. asset. 
Okay, so this is three component that we have to know to calculate risk. Okay. Uh, uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, that I have to wait it. We have to make a valuation of information asset. asset. So the value the, to give score to make valuation of information asset uh, that based on different criteria. The first probably I I can make a score or weighted or valuation to information probably I can make based on this criteria. The first is which threat present a danger to the organization asset in the given environment. Probably I can make a value, I can make a score for asset based on which threat represent more the most dangers. Also, I can make a valuation to the asset asset based on what which one the cost cost to recover from successfully attack which one the highest score highest cost to recover from the successful attack and also i can uh, scoring the asset based on which threat required the greatest expenditure to prevent or uh, which threat that can uh, what's that? We can affect to im to the image of customer. Uh, yeah, something like that. For let's see here the example. So for example, I have an information asset uh, that is a digital yeah digital information. The first I have document logistic to outsource and then the second i have document supplier order and at the third i have document supplier fulfillment advice next we have a document customer order via online and also the i have a customer service request via email so i would like to know the, from these five type of document, which one, which one, which which type of document that the most important for the company? So to do that, I have to decide first. Uh, what criteria that I want to give the value? for this five document. So the first criteria, impact to revenue. So it means from this five type of document, which one that more important or uh, the, 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 the highly score to impact to the revenue. And then I want to see, I want to make sure which one from those documents that impact to profitability and public image impact. So in this case, I would like to valuation, to make a valuation, I would like to make a score for those five documents based on impact to revenue and also based to impact on profitability and also based on public image impact. So, because I have a three criteria, so the impact to revenue, I will say this is will will affect thirty percent. This is forty percent, and this is thirty percent. Okay. So, for in this case, in this example, oh, document that document logistic to our source will have a zero point eight. Uh, score based on impact to revenue or based on 
criteria impact to revenue have a score 0.8. But this document uh, has a value 0.9 based on impact to profitability. And this document also has value 0.5 to public image impact. So after I make scoring for all those documents based on these criteria, and then I uh, multiply 0.8 to 30% plus 0.9 multiplied by 40 plus 0.5 multiplied by 30%. So we add together, so it it will uh, I will have the final weighted score is seventy eight. So this is how the way we weight it or we make score or we make valuation for each asset. In this case, we have a information asset here. So in this table, we can see that the document customer order via SSL is the most important thing. It has a hundred. So after this, I know that I have to make priority. I have to make priority that I have to secure this asset. We have to pay attention more to secure this asset. In this case, this asset is a docu docu document that related to customer order. Okay, so probably document supplier fulfillment advice, it has a value 41. This is probably the last priority. So the the thing I have to make sure that is secure. Okay, so this is the example how to uh, weight it or score or put value valuation in asset. And also the same thing I can score or weight it to the attack or to the threat. In this case, for example. The, the the attack because of software piracy. So in this case, in this case, software piracy is mean probably we use the uh, application illegal application, yeah, software piracy, and also uh, threat because of accidental user data 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 deletion, accidental server data deletion and so on, ransomware, and so on. So, ah, oh, the attack or the threat because ransomware have a value eight to probability of occurrence. And the attack of ransomware has a value three to probability of success. And the ransomware has a value five to extend the damage. And ransomware has value five to cost to restore. So in this case, has a total five. So if this case, in this case, we will see that all oh, accidental user data deletion is 6.2. So this means. I have to pay attention for this threat or this attack. Okay, so that is the purpose of valuation or weighted or scoring of asset and threat. Okay, now this is how to calculate risk. So if I put in math, risk is equal to likelihood of vulnerability multiplied by value multiplied by one minus percent risk already control and plus uncertainty. This is for example. So 
if I have information asset A has a value score 50, so after I make a weighted, after I scoring, so information asset A has a value or score 50, like this, like this. In this case, probably 51, 50, in this case, 50, one of them 50. And has one vulnerability that has a likelihood of one zero. So it means this information asset A has vulnerability that likelihood will happen, the possibility to be happen is one. So we don't it's already control because this is no current control in this case, adjust to see is you is right or not. So in this All right, thank you. So this is the example. If I have an information asset A, asset A has a value 50. So I will plug in here 50. I'm sorry, I will plug in here 50, the value. And one vulnerability that has likelihood 1.0. So I will plug in 1.0 here. And percent risk already control. In, in this case, it said no current control. It will be zero in here. 90% accurate is mean uncertainty is 10%. This is 0 0.1. Okay. So that is how to calculate risk. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, how about if I know there is a risk and then I apply the control, I apply something that can avoid the risk. I did apply that. I did implement to avoid the risk. But how about if still something happened, I mean, some bad thing happened. So there are four strategies to face on that, on that situation. The first thing, avoidance. So avoidance is mean apply safeguard to eliminate or reduce the remaining uncontrolled risk. This is attempt to prevent the exploitation of the vulnerability. So to do that, there are three methods to avoidance the risk. The first is application, application of policy. The second is training and education. The third is application of technology. So that is the three method to avoidance, uh, to avoidance risk. And the, the third strategy is transfer. So if we know that might be, even though I have applied the control and I'm thinking maybe something will still happen. So if I could not do anything about that, so I can take the second strategy, which is transfer. So I can transfer the risk. I can buy insurance to transfer risk. And probably I can outsource of one uh, business process in our company. I can outsource. So that is how to transfer risk. 
And then the third one is mitigation. Mitigation is mean I have to make a second plan. I have to make a B plan. If I have done apply the control and I'm thinking something bad will or might be happen. So I have to create a plan B that is mitigation. And the fourth strategy is acceptance. Well, if I'm thinking, okay, I still have risk even though I have applied the control, but maybe there is some risk, uh, the risk still happen. Well, I cannot, I cannot transfer the risk. I do know what I do not know what to do. So I have to accept that risk. But to accept this race, I have to know the consequence. Okay, this is only valid when the organization has determined the level of risk, assess the probability of attack, and estimate the potential damage that could occur. Okay, perform a throughout cost benefit analysis and evaluated control. So before we take the fourth, the, the, the fourth strategy is acceptance. So we have to think deeply about the risk. Okay. Okay. So I think this is uh, the last one. How to develop a plan. So it means how to develop a plan to face if some bad things still happen. So a plan or methodology that an organization used to respond and deal with an expected even security incident or data breach, even though the company have applied the control. So the first thing to do, we have to preparation. In preparation, yeah, identify asset, threat and control, attack characterization, and attack scenario. And then the second thing, detection. So determine for sign or symptom of attack and look for indicator. So the second, after we do preparation, identification asset, threat control, and attack scenario. So we have to uh, we have to decide we have to decide the symptom or the sign of attack. Okay. And then during incident. During incident is mean I have to uh, write down the instruction or the step have to do to deal with the attack or unexpected event and restore the system. So this is the thing that we have to write down if the symptom something uh, if uh, so if I have the symptoms or the sign for attack because every attack will have the different symptom every attack have a different sign. So based on the symptom and sign, I have to choose which one step that we have to take. So this is all we have to planning. We have to write down. And then the last one after the incident, we have to do report. This report is very important to analyze uh, whether our instruction is already efficient. Whether uh, is it that is there any step that we can add? So the next time, if the attack, if the same attack happen, so we can uh, take care of the attack quickly. Okay. Uh, uh, so this is the detail the detailed explanation of these four steps for develop a plan. So actually, this is based on 
Abraham Lincoln said that if we could first know where we are and whether we are tending, we could better judge what to do and how to do it. And also according to Chinese general, Sun Tzu, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of the hundred If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gain, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. So it means with this guy's philosophy, so the things before we move on, we have to know our condition. We have to know ourselves. So to know ourselves, in this case, in this uh, uh, risk management, IT risk management, first we have to identify, examine, and understand the information and system currently in place, and then calculate risk. <laughs> it's main identify, examine, and understand the threat facing the organization. Identify the control and mitigation strategies. Uh, <laughs> no attack scenario. Okay. So we have to know the tech. Uh, okay. So to know the symptom or to know how to detect, the first thing we have to do is collect information, including how we block email message or malicious executable file together with the time, date, location, and when to properly analyze. During the incident, the important thing is we have to make sure about the response time. We have to make sure about the recovery point objective. We have to uh, make sure if the incident can be handled as fast as we can. We have to target if more than five minutes of if more or if more than one minute, what's supposed to do. And after incident, also we have to decide if we have to do forensic or not forensic in this case is mean we have to decide if uh whether this incident have to take to the court or not do we have to do forensic or not we have to decide for every then whether to do forensic or not I think this is the end of our. Uh, uh, this is the end of my slide. Uh, thank you very much for for your attention. I give back to Professor uh, Tan. Thank you, thank you, Professor Benfano, and uh, thank you for this uh, interesting presentation. As I said earlier. That uh, you know, uh, it is not easy. Cyber security, information security, is not cheap. It is not easy. What we need to do is uh, we need to learn and understand as individuals. Can can all the participants please mute your mic? Thank you. Is, is that from your background, uh, Ben Pano? Ah, yeah. Prof. Sam. Is that voice coming from your background or is it one of the participants? Uh, yeah, someone is speaking. Uh, and all the participants, please mute the. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got it. Right. Yeah. So, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, so 
what I what I was saying is that uh, uh, it is not uh, possible for individuals and in, uh, small organizations to come up with the, uh, information security risk management uh, plans and strategies because uh, number one uh, they do not have the knowledge and number two it does not come cheap it is uh, uh, it requires professionals and re it requires resources so um, the plan that you have shared I'm sure that uh, all of us in the audience will be able to uh, comprehend understand and make use of it so thank you for that there are a number of questions in the Q and A. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Uh, there is a question uh, from a participant. They would like to request the copies of the slides. So, if you can uh, okay. type in your email ID in the chat, and uh, the participants can directly get the slides from you. Is, is that okay? Yes. Yes, That's please okay. uh, type your email ID in the chat and uh, those participants interested in uh, wow. getting the slides. It, it, is, it is up to Professor Sovito to okay. decide Prof whether he wants to share it or not. Yes, Prof Sam. How about if I put the uh, PowerPoint presentation on chat so everyone can download it? Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So let me do do, do that first. So everyone okay. can. And there was right. also a request for the recording of this presentation. So as I said earlier that at the beginning of this webinar that we are recording and we will upload this recording on our YouTube channel. Not only this one, but all the previous uh, recordings of our webinar uh, will be available on our YouTube channel shortly. So another question that uh, has been asked in Q&A is, uh, can you have an example of for acceptance strategy? That's first part of the question, an example of acceptance strategy. And second part, also, should the organization at least mitigate the risk first before okay. accepting? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, the first thing when we analyze, when we identification, when we identified the threat. So the first thing to do, we have to mitigation the threat. We have to mitigation the risk, the first thing. The, the thing that I explain, the thing that I share here, if the thing that I share in this talk is, how about if we did mitigation, we did apply the control, but how about if the risk still happen? So that is the concept. So that's why, yes, the organization have to mitigate the risk first. Then after that, we think again, how about if the risk still happen? That's the things that we have to take care of. That is, uh, Tony, okay, okay. And then can you have an example for acceptance strategy? Yeah, for example, yeah. Uh, say the organization has an online, uh, what's that? Online, online e-commerce. Say the organization has a e-commerce or online selling. The uh, the threat, for example, the threat, for example, is uh, because of malware that probably will attack our uh, 
a server. So we can identify that the malware that we worry about is, for example, uh, ransomware. Okay. We don't know how to deal with ransomware. And then, for example, we don't know how to deal with the ransomware. So if I, if I still worry about ransomware, then the business cannot be run. We just talk how to do the ransomware. So in this situation, okay, I will accept this one. Okay, I have a risk about ransomware, but the business still going, I will run the business, but because there is a risk, so every single transaction in our business, I will make a backup. Probably I have make a two or three backup. I think that is probably the simple uh, example, Tony. Do I? Uh, thank you, sure thank you, you, Professor, so much. Uh, uh, the next question is that uh, there is an argument in our organization as to where the information security will be. That is, they want to know information security will be under which department. There is argument to where information will be under. Ah, of course, that is under IT, Information Technology Department, Alvin. That's, that's the information security will be under Information Technology Department. Thank you. Yeah. It will be under the Information Technology Department. Thank you. So. The next question is, is it possible for people with little forensic analysis skills to carry out forensic analysis? Okay, uh, the forensic analysis, if we decide at the end of the incident, we have to do forensic. So uh, there are three party if we want to do forensic. The first is the, uh, what's that policeman? Uh, uh, the first is a legal department. The second is the IT department. The third is the policeman. Uh, uh, yeah, policeman, yeah. So these three things have to do together, okay? And if the IT department, the people in the IT department doesn't have enough skill, so we have to hire the consultant. We have to hire someone who has a skill. So that is the answer. And I think there is another question that before that. Yes, yes. Uh, there's uh, one, one last question. Do we have a concept of drills that is be prepared by attempting a mock attack and testing the protection and mitigation. If so, do we have any recommended toolkit to implement mm. drills by each organization? Okay, yeah. Well, after we have a documentation to, uh, to prepare if the attack come in, we, we have the documentation. Oh, if the symptom something like this, so I have to take this action. If the symptom like this, I have to take this action. After we did, after we done this preparation, uh, uh, we have to do simulation. We have to try out, is this effective, efficient or not? Is that right or not? We have to do simulation. Uh, in the phase simulation, in the simulation phase, then we need the tool, we need something that uh, similar to similar if the attack happened. Okay, so we have to have tool. The tool, I think, uh, if you search in Google, in internet, uh, we have to, uh, we can download 
some of the tool, some of the attack that we that we can apply on our organization. But most of the people they use Kali Linux. It said Kali Linux. Kali Linux is the tool. It's a good tool to uh, to generate similar to exact attack. And also we can uh, download the, uh, the what's that the data or the yeah the data from Kaggle kaggle.com they have a lot of things uh, like a network attack like similar to network attack am i answered the question yes uh, thank you uh, professor ben fano we will uh, uh, or there is one more what they want to know the site again if you can uh, uh yeah what was the site url again i type it uh can you see my typing uh i think at the moment you are just posting it to host and panelists if you can change your to everyone Oh, okay, okay, yeah. uh, okay. How and uh, that that was the last question. We'll uh, wind up this webinar. So just uh, please post that uh, site to everyone. And uh, everyone, we would love for you to share a photo of you participating in our webinar or comment on our Facebook page, Twitter or Instagram. I would like to thank the speaker for an inspiring and interesting webinar. I mean, uh, normally such uh, uh, plans, such risks management costs uh, uh, a lot, but he has shared with us for free and we really appreciate that. I and the IPNG executive committee am really thankful and appreciate your time and effort. And we would also like to thank all the participants for taking the time out on a Saturday to attend. The APNG executive committee and I really appreciate your participation and we look forward to your further participation. Our next webinar will be in October. If you have registered, uh, we will uh, put you on our mailing list and we will invite you to our next webinar. To all the participants and the speaker, and our IPNG executive uh, committee members that are here. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. See you again. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.